Hi friends, I'm Shy Fox, and today we're making a tutorial about line art in Clip Studio Paint. I know a lot of people find making line art is difficult and frustrating, so I'm going to help you guys by breaking down what tools in this program can really help you uh, make better and clean line art. And the good news is that a lot of other programs have the same tools, so learning about them will also help you in other programs. So if you don't have Clip Studio Paint, don't worry. I'm also a live streamer on Twitch, so you can always come by and catch me streaming and chat with me there, ask me questions, and check out art in real time. Now I'm going to show you guys something I've been working on recently. Here is the line art for a project that I've been doing. We got Princess Peach, Rosalina, Daisy, and lots of, you know, Mario Bros characters in this. So this is a finished in terms of the line art. The coloring's not done. I'm not done this one actually. It would have been nice to have it finished to show you, but that's all right. I can show you what I've got done so far in terms of coloring, um, just getting started with Daisy and haven't done her hair or anything. But So that's what we got, but having clean line art is always really important to get going with making our art look good. And if it's frustrating to do, that can be really off-putting. So I'm going to take us over to a new canvas and I am going to start by mentioning stabilizers are really important. Some of you might not even know what this is. If you don't, you're seriously missing out and this is gonna help you out a ton. If you do know about a stabilizer and you know about it in Clip Studio, I've got a tip that's really gonna hopefully help you if you didn't know about it already. I kind of discovered it on my own and it's not obvious. So if you go into any sort of uh, pen tool like these or any even brush tool, you can get stabilizers applied to it. See, stabilization, stable, <laughs> stabilization shows here. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stick with a pen tool for now. So we got our stabilization here. Hopefully you can see that. And you can set it to, you know, you got the slider. So you can set it low. And basically what that does is it lets your pen write really, really, really fast. Um, it doesn't slow or stabilize your pen to make your lines smoother. So this is really key in making smooth lines, kind of the purpose of this tool. And then if you put it at full, it'll slow down your line a bit, but I find at full, it's not that much. So I kind of get around this by clicking the little arrow and entering in a number. You can go as high as 100. So let's do 100, it's like a percentage. So at 100, we're at full max stabilization. All right, now it's slow. It can hardly keep up with my movements, it's so slow, but if I wanna make a very smooth shape okay maybe i'll be able to make nice circles using that so you can see how stable it takes some practice i would not really recommend drawing at 100 it's almost too slow and too stable you can compare that again to this one it's really different and even if i were to try and draw it slowly to achieve the same thing uh this is going to be if you kind of really look at it like we'll use a smaller brush here let's make this smaller Ooh, if I try and go slow on a low setting, it just looks wobbly. Like this does not look nice. This looks, you know, bad, it looks bad. So what we can do, actually I'll leave that line and compare, put this back at hundred. Okay. And if I want to do the same thing, the smoothness between these two lines is insane. So really, if you're not using a stabilizer, you should. I tend to use mine at around 30. So I'll just put 30 in. And I did that for this whole project. This whole project over here I did with 30 stabilization on my pen. So I like 30. It's fast enough and it makes smooth lines. Ooh, smooth. You know what I mean? Okay, that looks nice and smooth. <laughs> so stabilization, super important. Don't forget about it. You're going to miss it if, you, if you've been using it and you ever go without it. It's a horrible feeling to not have your, your stabilizer. All right, so we're going to learn about vector layers. It's really important that we use vector layers and not regular layers for our line art because we want to be able to have a bunch of options to adjust our lines, which we can't do with a regular layer. So to show you, if I create um, a regular layer and do a line, 
All right, and now I'm gonna create a vector layer next to the regular layer, new raster layer button is new vector layer. So I'm gonna click that. It has a little cube shape as part of the layer to show you that it is vector. Looks like it does pretty much the same thing, but here's the difference. So we're gonna learn about the object tool next, but to show you the difference in from this point of view is that uh, when we go to object tools, Vector layers have a bunch of options for changing the line. Regular layers do not. All my options disappear. I'm looking over here. So we have options to change with vector, don't have options to change with regular lines. And we will get into this with object tools in a second, but if I click this, um, we can try there. Look, I've got all these pivot points to work with and I can do things with that. This, I just can't do that. There, it, there's no options. So vector layers um, are also important for scaling lines up and down, so or whatever's on your vector layer. Uh, for example, logos are made with vector layers because then you can scale them up. It doesn't get distorted. It maintains its exact shape. So that's the great thing about vectors. It maintains all shape no matter scaling up or down, whereas a regular layer, you scale something up, you, it gets distorted, right? So for the object tool, then we're just going to get into what options we have. So if we have a line, uh, the cool thing is, is you can use different kinds of brushes. So for example, I'm just going to make a different kind of line. All right, whatever. There's a, a line with texture. You totally could have um, a line with texture, whatever brush you want. It will work. All right. So we are on our vector layer i want to switch to again you're going to have to look for your um, object tool depending on which thing you have selected the actual little icon in your tool menu may change so you're going to have to look for for it but ultimately we're looking for we'll start with the object free transform so if i click one of my layers this gives me options to transform my line. Uh, I found early on that this wasn't enough of a transform so I went looking otherwise. So if you use the select tool, we can use transform tools to do more. So for example, I have hotkeys for this but I will show you where they are here. So you go transform, scale rotate, that's fine, that's similar to the object one. Ones I find really useful is the free transform because it lets us deform like this. It also, we also have, what's the other really important one? Transform. The mesh transform is really good. Now we have options to increase or decrease the number of vertical and horizontal points at which, at which we can adjust this. Um, this I actually use in painting sometimes, like if I'm trying to adjust like how a nose is looking, kind of adjust the nostrils or something. But you can use this in line art too. I mean, it gives you complete control. So let's click OK. Does that look better? Maybe not. But you get the idea. You can use it. Other important things you can do is change the color. So under the object free transform tool, we can change the colors of the lines. That can be useful for so many reasons. Also, this one is really useful changing the brush size. I'm just going to make that black again. And you can increase the brush size. You can pull the slider thinner and thicker. Ooh, that's useful. So for example, in my project here, I can literally make the lines thicker or thinner. Ooh, thicker. <laughs> you know, for whatever reason you might want to do that or thinner. Uh, going thinner can be risky after coloring because it can leave some white patches and holes in your art. So be careful with going thinner and, you know, ruining quality of art. So, but just something to be mindful of and a tool you still can use. So other tools that we have, uh, useful to be able to adjust pivot points like this. Uh, so the object control point and scale. And there's, of course, all these settings you can go into and play with in all of these tools to try and, you know, get it to, to work best for you. This pro program is complex in that way, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's great. They're super useful. Now I find there's actually too many pivot points here. So you have a couple of options when making your lines, how to sort of counteract that. There's a tool called Simplify Vector Line which when you go over a section, it can totally ruin it. Um, I find it's really hit and miss, 
but it's still good to know about. And then when I go back here over the section I went over, now I'm clicking on the control point uh, tool or the object control point tool, doesn't matter. And we can have more, uh, less points so we can actually manipulate our line a little easier. So the simplify tool has its place. Um, you just kind of have to figure out when's a good time to use it. And that's the thing about all these tools is it's going to maybe feel a little overwhelming at first, but once you sort of get the hang of it and you've practiced using them, it's going to get so much easier and you're going to actually work way faster with a lot less frustration. We can correct the line width with the line width. We can thicken our lines, ooh, thicken or narrow the lines, ooh, narrow. We can increase how strong this is. Okay. There's other tools in here in the object tools that you can mess with. These are some of the main ones that I've been using. The other ones I'm sort of leaving alone because I don't really use them that much, but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the things you can do. And of course, these tools work on any brush texture or shape, so which is kind of neat, right? So you can go ahead and use any brush now, one thing that can be really frustrating for me is trying to draw rounded shapes or shapes on my canvas that are large and have rounded edges, specifically round, I suppose straight lines too. And they won't get fixed the way I want them to. In other words, the object tools aren't quite cutting it. So what do you do when the object tools aren't quite cutting it? We use the line tool. So it took me a while to find this tool but it's, it's a lifesaver too. So the line tool right here, okay? And again, could be selected under different uh, icon. I find, you know, straight lines can be, can have their place like, great, now I can make nice straight lines for when that's necessary. But the one I really like is the continuous curve tool. All right, so we got ourselves a so-called circle. Not really, but we're gonna fix that. So with our control point tool, ooh, because we have so few um, control points, this makes it really, really easy for us to move it around. And the nice thing is, is it actually closes, closes when you use the curve tool, the line. So if you attach it here, it's gonna close which is nice. So this is, this is what I do when I just can't get the circle or the round shape or any shape the way I want. When I'm frustrated and it's just not working, always go to the line tool. It, it fixes everything. And then from the line tool, you then can just tweak the control points. It just makes life so much better. Ooh, round. Ooh, almost perfectly round. See what I mean? And with that, there is no line, no shape that you can't draw. Now, the last tool I really wanna go over is the vector erase tool because I find it so useful and it's just a really efficient time-saving tool. So again, we need vector layers. You can't do this in raster layers. So vector, if we made, let's say, I don't know, a shape like that. And I was like, hmm, I'd really like this to be a square and I want to erase all the points where they kind of meet. This is a very tedious way to do it. Uh, some people do it this way, or you try and actually draw the corners and that can be difficult too, but I've got a better tool for you. So under the eraser tool, there's an option for, so eraser, option for vector erase, which is meant for vector layers. Shocking. Okay, so what we do is there's options in the tool properties. I like to use the one that's for the, what does it say? Vector up to intersection. So you can try the different ones, but I use the intersection one. And ooh, now we're erasing where the intersections are. You can even do it in one swipe of the eraser brush if you wanted to. Ooh, so this tool is often demonstrated when doing like hair. So if we were doing, you know, like anime hair and oh yeah, that's the stuff. And then it's like, hmm, that doesn't look good. You know, on the tips here, I'd really like that to race. Boom. And you might need to clean it up because it's not always perfect. Normally I wouldn't draw with such thick lines. That might make a nice difference for us if we were using something 
more like that. I'm used to using tools in a certain way. That's better. And then when I do it differently in the tutorial, like really thick lines, I was like, why didn't that work? I don't draw lines that thick usually, but if I did, you know, you still mess around, make it work. So yeah, that's, uh, this is a good example of how the vector erase tool is so extremely useful. Highly recommend it for saving time. You're just like drawing along. Wow. That is nice. Um, drawing. <laughs> I'm a great drawer. And then, oh, let's erase there and that and oh, gorgeous. That's what I was trying to do this whole time. So hopefully um, the tools I showed in this video are really going to help you make better line art that's faster, more efficient, better tools that you can use. And, you know, maybe you'll be making art as nice as this someday. It's pretty nice. And, you know, as round as I make my circles. So I believe in you. You got this. If you found this video useful or enjoyable, something like that, drop a like and a sub if you if you so will yourself too. Uh, <laughs> great at these videos. If you have any questions that weren't quite answered in this video, you can definitely comment and I'll reply below. I reply to all comments. And if you have any suggestions on other videos and tutorials or things you want me to do a video on, just let me know, comment that as well. Be sure to check out my other videos. Thank you for watching, keep arting, and we'll see you next time.